This is Yulanzi's new and updated 7-in-1 stream controller hub, the D200H that is essentially an Elgato stream deck which is a programmable macro pad capable of launching specific folders, running personalized automated macro key presses, remapping keyboard shortcuts for photo editing or video editing, AI assistant task, utilizing live streaming features like scene transitions or any mic adjustment settings and a whole lot more with just one click. The deck features 14 high resolution programmable LCD keys with tactile feedback when pressed, fully customizable to however you wish to set it up. Now the new D200H over the predecessor, the D200, comes with a built-in USB hub that connects to your computer via USB-C. Now the 7-in-1 hub in a nutshell includes I.O. ports like PD85 watts USB-C output port, a SD and micro SD card slot, a total of two USB 3.0 Type-C port, and two USB 3.0 Type-A ports for basic data transfer which are all rated at only 5 gigabits per second transfer speeds. Today, we'll be taking a look at Yulanzi's D200H DAC dock, talk about everything there is to know about this macro pad and USB hub, all the features it has to offer, the things I like and dislike, and my overall thoughts. Now, as always, disclaimers first, this is not a sponsored video, however, Yulanzi did send over this unit for a review. They do not get to preview this video before it is published and everything I say is of my own opinion. But with that out of the way, let's dive right in. So the D200H comes packaged in a classic Yulanzi packaging that includes a user manual, a USB-C to USB-C cable with a built-in Type-A converter, a warranty card, and the D200H dock itself. That's pretty much everything that came included in the box. Now let's start off with the dimensions and build quality. The D200H sits at around 15.4cm in length, 9cm in width, and about 5cm in height, and it weighs in at around 300 grams. The build quality is surprising very solid with an all aluminium alloy chassis with some plastics all around. The 14 programmable LCD keys at the front have high resolution displays and a tactile feedback when pressed. Now the deck dock is actually slightly angled at around 15 degrees tilt, similar to a regular keyboard tilt, making it more ergonomic when using it. Under the dock are rubber feet like such, preventing the dock from slipping. Now let's take a look at the I.O. ports starting from the front. All the way from the left, we have a USB-C to host port connecting this hub to your computer. A 100W USB-C input port that only outputs at a maximum of 85W output power. Right beside it is a USB Type-C port and a USB-A port, both rated at USB 3.0 at 5 gigabits per second transfer speeds. Situated on the right hand side is yet another set of USB 3.0 Type-C and Type-A ports. Towards the left side, we have a micro NTF card slot reader with transfer speeds of up to 150 megabytes per second write speeds and around 86 megabytes per second read speeds. And that's pretty much everything there is to know about the hardware side of things available on the D200H DAC dock. Now let's set this up for the very first time. The first cable required is this USB-C to host port. One USB-C into your computer of your choice, either a Mac or Windows machine, and the other into the D200H USB-C port label right here. Of course, any other peripherals of your choice can be connected to the other ports around the dock. Now, once plugged in, the DAC dock takes a couple of seconds to boot up as seen at the bottom right corner. Yulanzi starting up logo will appear for around 10 seconds. Now, after booting up, you should be getting this default page. Yulanzi mentioned that to be able to fully utilize the DAC dock, it is recommended to download the UStudio app by Yulanzi. So let's head over to their website and download it. So I'll be downloading it for my Mac machine. You can pick whatever operating system that you are in, either a Mac or a Windows. Once downloaded, install the application and you should be good to go. And so I spent the next few days and weeks slowly customizing each of these key presses from Final Cut Pro to Adobe Lightroom Classic and even OBS which is for streaming. So a quick tour around the interface of the D200H. These 13 square keys are able to be customized individually including adding text position on the top middle or the bottom section for clear visualization of your keyboard shortcuts. Each of these icons can be customized based on whatever image that you upload to the app. Now this rectangle shaped key by default have three layers, one in which display 
replace the current time, CPU, GPU, and RAM usage. And the last is just a placeholder. Now, this particular key does not seem to have any options of reassigning it to any other features. You get to also customize a cool screensaver mode when your machine is in its lock screen mode. You may customize it to whatever picture you like, just align it like such in the app and you are pretty much good to go. So very quickly, let me show you my go-to apps that I use for all my content creation as well as my most frequently used apps. I have Final Cut Pro as my video editing software, Lightroom for photo editing, Chrome for web browsing, Notion for note-taking and YouTube scheduling, and just for demo purposes, OBS which is a streaming app which makes the D200H an excellent companion but more on that a little bit later in the video. Now, pressing each of these keys opens up the app and changes into the plugin I've created for this specific application. I've also included a back page button to link back to the default page like such. Now let's start with the first application that is Final Cut Pro. The first thing that I usually do when starting off a project, I always try to create an organized bin or media management system that usually has dedicated folders for A-roll, B-roll, GoPro footages, screen grabs and others for any random footages. So usually I would have to create each of them individually or copying it from an empty template folder but with the D200H with the click of a button, these folders can be created just like such. So this is my first step when starting a video editing project. Now moving on to the final cut Pro app itself. So with the click of a button, I can launch Final Cut Pro and it automatically jumps into Final Cut Pro's profile that have all the shortcuts I've assigned it to. From the top row, I have assigned a key to access video scopes that is especially useful when color grading. Another key for multi-cam clips for the different camera angles whenever necessary. Show and hide the built-in horizon line, timeline and zoom fitting key as well as a title creator shortcut key. I would usually have to either fumble around with forgotten key but shortcuts or navigate for these settings manually like such. The second row is pretty much for the folders that I constantly tap in and out when editing, especially my video library file, often use call out background audio tracks and even my desktop folder for any screen grabs recorded during the editing session. So far, I am trying to incorporate more shortcuts on the D200H but seeing how comfortable I am with the keyboard layout when editing on the go with my laptop without the D200H, I tend to prefer the normal keyboard layout with custom assigned hotkeys personally but having to be able to remap certain shortcut keys is actually quite nice to have. Next on the list is Adobe Lightroom which is my go-to photo editing app. With the D200H you get to assign custom hotkeys to your liking. Essentially any keyboard shortcut available from the app can assign them and remap them to your liking. Now for the longest time I've not used the regular Lightroom layout to edit my photos but instead I've been using LR Super Keys which is this plugin extension tool that completely changed the way I edit photos here on Lightroom Classic. I've talked about this in details on how this plugin extension works with a rotating dial pop-up built into any keyboard shortcut assigned to Lightroom. Now this extension also hovers on top of the existing Lightroom key presses and you can still use the default Lightroom keys as per normal which is pretty sweet. If you are interested to know more, be sure to check out one of my old videos talking about them, which will be linked in the description box down below. Now, let me quickly run you through a couple of keyboard shortcuts assigned to the D200H. We have paste from previous edit, export, chromatic aberration, select all flag photos, lens profile selection, all of which are straightforward Lightroom keyboard shortcuts. I have them here on the D200H as they are sort of the most used key presses whenever I'm editing. So having them inside turned out to be quite handy. Now the part where the D200H shines is the ability to perform key sequencing. This means that keyboard shortcuts can be pressed in sequence depending on your requirement as pre-programmed preset to shorten the total key presses required for the same repetitive task. Here we take a look at this key coding that I've made to perform a total of four actions. First is to flag this picture second to copy the current setting, third to move on to the next photo, and fourth to paste the setting onto the next photo. All of these four actions can be done with just one click. So depending on your task for repetitive tasks, you might need to sit down and discover a whole new workflow change if it turns out to be useful to you. As for the next two apps like Notion, I'm still figuring out what keyboard shortcuts I can utilize to maximize my productivity, like adding a toggle button or a to-do button, or even have my usual close 
composing text for a YouTube video printed with a single click of a button. I also have the Chrome app right here that just switches to the Chrome tab whenever pressed. And as for the built-in profile suited for AI tasks prepared by Yulanzi, there are a few pages of AI-ready websites that you can browse through like ChatGPT, Gemini, DeepSeek, and a bunch more. Now onto the final app that I can showcase that is kind of the main purpose of the D200H deck doc. Being a stream deck competitor where these keys are programmed to change certain scenes of what the viewer sees, play a certain sound effect on stream, toggle on and off a capture device and more. So here is a simple demonstration of my future live streaming setup if I ever do so. Imagine a time where I do photo editing session in Lightroom live with multiple camera angles with the D200H I can easily switch between camera angles and if I wanted to talk directly to the camera, it all can be done with a single click. Now, of course, this cannot be a direct replacement for Elgato's Stream Deck with the Wavelink software that pretty much governs the streaming platforms like dedicated channel input controls, lighting knobs for brightness control, and a whole bunch more. But it is good that Yulanzi's budget D200H could be all you need for you to start streaming. Now, the last thing that the D200H does best is literally its integration with lights from Yulanzi's very own VL and AL lighting series, as well as other smart home systems. Now, unfortunately, I won't be able to showcase any of these but it is said that Yulanzi's Lighting Master app is able to control the lights directly where you can adjust the white balance, brightness and grouping of the light with just one click. Now, do take note that there is no knobs to physically dial in the brightness level, just presets to a fixed lighting condition. That being said, I've yet to own any of Yulanzi's lighting equipment that works with the Lighting Master app. So when I do happen to pick one up, I'll be sure to come back to make another video talking about integrating it with the D200H deck dock. And that's basically a customizable macro pad for your ultimate productivity companion, similar to what a Stream Deck controller has to offer with limited functions of course, but at a fraction of the cost. Overall, my use case with the Uranzi D200H has been quite a breeze, with permanent access to my most used shortcuts at my fingertips, as well as the ability to customize the key individually, including changing of the icons and labeling, made it a very, very intuitive user experience. I think personally, key sequencing, which is performing multiple actions with a single click, stands out the most to me, as it greatly reduces the need for repetitive tasks, and I think this is one of my favorite things about the D200H. The additional hub for random peripheral devices are also a nice touch, freeing up space on your desk, replacing hubs or docks that might have the same function. I personally don't mind additional USB ports, which I always require. One downside about the hub is the speed on the hub could be at least 10 gigabits per second, but that could bring up the price point a little higher. The other thing that I dislike from a hardware perspective is probably the lack of rotatable physical knobs or sliders. Any of these would greatly increase the user experience interacting with the dials for a more precise control over a certain action. As for the software side of things, the lack of dedicated functions of an app is quite a bummer, as you have to heavily rely on the application's native keyboard shortcuts to be mapped onto the D200H. Unlike Logitech's MX console, where there is an entire customizable wheel integrated natively via API, which gives way more control over certain functions. But there will be a whole new topic for another time. But all things considered, the D200H is quite a solid product that I would highly recommend it for content creators or people wanting to improve their workflow or productivity. Having a dedicated macro pad for the everyday repetitive tasks is actually pretty handy. That being said, the D200H 7-in-1 Stream Controller Hub is currently priced at $70 US on Yulanzi's website. If you are interested, be sure to check out Yulanzi's website for more details. I'll leave a link in the description box down below for your ease of reference. Once again, a huge shout out to Yulanzi for sending over this unit for review. And that's pretty much it from me. I hope you have found this video insightful. As always, if you have any questions or things you want me to test out, feel free to leave me a comment down below. I'll be sure to get back to you guys as soon as possible. Thank you all so, so much for tuning in. My name is Ken and I'll catch you all in the next one. Stay safe, peace out, and bye-bye.